Huh? Whoa! Welcome to the Nostalgic Multiverse. Hello everyone on YouTube and International Collectors Union. I'm Alex, aka Nostalgic, and time for another episode of Mini Views. It has been a while since I've done one of these videos, and well, for the context on International Collectors Union, I've been doing a lot of editing videos as of recently on YouTube. And, well, I need something more simple to get my mind off of the editing. So, with that, let's begin this episode of Mini Views. First up, we have this rather unusual Thomas. I don't know where this thing was made. I don't know what company owns this, but this looks to be a Tommy toy. I don't know what this is supposed to do. He's missing his cab. So, yeah, I found this thing in a charity shop. I don't know what to make of this item. Let's just move on to the next item. Out of the selection that I had in a bag, there were this tiny Bart Simpson minifi uh, minifigure and this Lego Policeman minifigure. I'm rather happy about the Lego Policeman. And even about Bart, the sad fact is it came with a fake minifigure. I'm not going to show it off here because that rarely has any value. But this one, this minifigure might because... That's an old design for Lego heads. Moving on. I'm willing to bet some of you remember Mini Views episode 2. Well, the YouTube audience at least. But, um, yeah. You remember I got this model of Mater. Well, let's go back in time a bit, shall we? This is Mater before he got his rust and lost his hood. This uh, model is still squat, like I said in my last video, which included a shake and go version of Mater. But hey, it's pretty good. But the unfortunate thing is, unlike the newer model, he doesn't have his battery hood. Uh, but hey, it's a nice model all around, and it's always nice to get these teal Mater models. Next up, we have a Metallic Henry. I'm willing to bet the YouTube audience remembers the video where I made custom take and play Thomas's, and then I showed off a Metallic Henry. Well, um, here's something about that YouTube audience. I still have the Henry from that video. The difference is he's missing his tender. So here's something I actually want to do. I would keep the tender and give it to this Henry model. But that leaves me with a question. What shall I do with this Metallic Henry model? I will not be doing a thing like scratching up the paint and then making a custom out of it. This is a Metallic model, not a normal model. If it were a normal model that I already had, sure. But considering this is a Metallic model, I've got to figure out something to do with it. Maybe I'll give it to one of my friends in the United States or something. Now, here's something really nice. Now, considering the fact that I found nothing in Sicily, I uh, legit, uh, I, uh, my father took me out so as to make up for the bad afternoon I had in Sicily. He bought me this Sonic plushie for 20 euros. And... I love this plushie, it's so cute! <laughs> uh, I mean, it's an emoji plush, what would you expect? 
cutest plushie, I'd have to say. I bet some people would have a hard disagree. Next, I got this Lego system set for two euros. And this set was released in 1993. So this Lego set is rather old. Well, let's get it opened and built up, shall we? Now, these were all that were in there. Unfortunately, I could not find the other flag. I think I might have lost it during the building process, but whatever. At least uh, the, uh, the set does not disappoint. It has a ton of bush, trees, and even a palm tree. It has two fences, which come with flags, and even some beautiful flowers. Now, this is perfect for anyone who needs scenery things for their stop-motion sets. Especially if they're making a Lego series. Now, here we have something nice. I, uh, in the same charity shop that I found that old Lego system set, I also found this Sonic the Hedgehog fidget toy, which was from Burger King. So, we jiggle it around a bit and... It can go into either Knuckles' basket, or it can go into Sonic's basket. Uh, I mean, this is actually very fun around to play with, especially if you want a, something challenging in your time to fidget around with. Although it can get rather annoying with the noise the Chaos Emerald makes in there. All around, it's a pretty good item, even though... Uh, I must say, it's rather not as good as a figure. But hey, it's something. I like, uh, I like fidget toys. I don't care what anyone else would say. Moving on to the final product. Here we have Scrambler from Bob the Builder. Sorry about that. I almost dropped the Sonic fidget toy. Anyways. So, here I have Scrambler from Bob the Builder. Now, uh, here's something very interesting. At the store where I bought this guy, most stuff, uh, which was very old, were on sale. So, some of the stuff was 5 euros, 50 euros, 10 euros. It was amazing. And the fact that I got Scrambler for 5 euros is actually pretty good. So, with that, let's get him out of that packaging. After a few minutes of trying to get this guy out of his packaging, it's going to be impossible to get him out because of these stupid things. Ah, ah, forget it. Still, all around, the model in here absolutely looks fine. Considering the fact that this is a Bob the Builder take-along model from the early to late 2000s, when Learning Curve was still around. And the trailer is nice as well. You can even fold it up and reveal the tools that, Bob's needs, uh, that Bob needs in order to build stuff in Sunflower Valley. On the whole, it's a pretty cool Bob the Builder vehicle. And uh, I would highly recommend to getting this one if you are a Bob the Builder fan. But trust me, come to Malta... And sometimes you will find muddy scramblers. You'd be lucky to find lucky scramblers. It was tough trying to find a normal one. Moving on, we have this Chuggington breakdown crane. Or, as it's called on the box, Callie's Fire and Rescue Cars. Now, I'm not necessarily a Chuggington fan, but... Still, I have a few Chuggington diecasts around, so this, it does not bother me whatsoever. Let's just get this out of its packaging, and I also have another Chuggington diecast item to review, but we'll do this one first. So getting this thing out of its packaging, it's actually a pretty cool model. Sure, it has uh, six small wheels on each car, but hey, it, 
it's actually pretty good. Like, for example, if you need to get a Chuggington vehicle, actually a Chuggington train back on the rails, you can easily use this. Example, since I already have this Chuggington car out, we can use the crane, put the coupling in there, and then we set it back onto the rails. As for the fire truck car, I, I actually don't know what this does. I haven't seen that many episodes of the Chuggington show. So if you know how this car works, uh, let me know in the comment section. Let's move on to the final Chuggington thing. And then after that, we move on to the final item. Now here we have... Okay, this item's name is going to cause probably people in the comments to start going whopper, 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 whopper. This is called Hodge's Whopper Car. Uh, I honestly wish I can just get rid of this price tag and see what the, the name... Uh, what the name is for this thing. I don't know what the name is. Anyway, packaging looks nice. Now let's get him out of that freaking packaging already. So here we have Hodge and his Whopper car. Um, we have this load of gravel, I presume. And I presume this thing can be held with a magnet. Let me just get my, uh, uh, let me just get my spare metallic take along Henry for a moment. Hold on. I was right! This thing is... This thing is a magnet! Anyway. This car... It's alright. It's just... A normal... Car used for hauling gravel or coal or whatever. And we also have Hodge. Now, apparently, Hodge is a hodgepodge, meaning that he is made up of a very similitude of parts. Unfortunately, though, I do not know anything about Hodge. I do not an know anything at all about Chuggington. All I know is that this show, it tried to rival Thomas and Friends. That's all I know about this and that's it. Anyway, now that we've gotten these Chuggington items out of the way, let's move on to the final product in this episode of Mini Views. Last up, we have this Jack's figure of Classic Sonic. And I can already see some of you guys going, Don't you already have this? Let me explain. My mother was cleaning one day, and all of a sudden, this classic Sonic figure dropped to the ground, and a, a, one of the sneakers broke off. So I've ha I had to get this replacement in order to have a, one in good condition. So let's get him out of that packaging and review him like I should have. Two years ago. This Sonic figure is as good as I remember. Because here's the thing. I cannot, I cannot balance this guy on both legs. I can only balance him on one. And a good thing too. He actually looks great in this pose. Now this is the way that you keep a Sonic model on point. Yeah, keep him like this, and that's that. That's the way you display this Sonic. My, uh, and I'm honestly glad that I got this so that I don't have to deal with a broken, you know, a broken sneaker Sonic. In any, not a broken sneaker, but a Sonic with a leg and no sneaker whatsoever. Anyway, with that. Thank you for watching this episode of Mini Views. This is Nostalgic. Signing off, reminding you that nostalgia never dies.